uh, oh, I guess that, it's really uh, educational opportunities on that campus. They had a campus there. They had seven of the most beautiful training rooms I had ever seen. I had, you know, classroom in me. It was just, they were so much, these, are, these classrooms are wonderful. They had, you know, fabulous carpeting, wonderful lighting, food outside your door all the time. You know, just, <coughs> it was really the Cadillac. And so we rented that space. And we offered our college credit courses there. At some point in time, they started, you know, they said, well, you know, we really need this space. So we're going down to five classrooms, from seven to five. That, oh, this is not going well. Our business is growing, and they're trying to get us into smaller, smaller places. So we had to look for a place to relocate. Well, there wasn't any place to relocate in this area. It was a suburb kind of a place, almost like this county. Um, and so we found a shopping center that was not doing very well. It was called the Grand Boulevard Mall, and it was, it was designed not for everyone. It was a very snooty place. And so it would bank on it. And we bought it for $4 million and got $18 million from the state and rehabbed it into the most beautiful teaching space now. Uh, on the college, uh, in the college of, as a whole. And what we learned from that is, you know, when you walk by a storefront at a mall, the students liked it and the teachers liked it. They liked having all that glass out there and being able to see each other and just being a part of a community. All those, you know, circular places and all that public space that's in a mall, we used all that. So we were able to re uh, rehabilitate it, set a new standard for teaching spaces where it's quiet, the air conditioning doesn't drive crazy. And you know, you can do movies in two different classrooms and not hear each other, that kind of thing. So that was a really fun project. The faculty uh, and I worked really close together on how to design those things, what they liked about the space they were in, which was really kind of, you know, just, we just put, you know, tables and chairs in these old retail stores, right? Some of those retail stores had, you know, marble on the floor and funny lighting and hangers and things like that. What do you like, what do you not like? We designed the same, it's sort of like what you've done, I think, here in your uh, in your student activities area and where your cafeteria is, where everybody's involved and you get the best thinking. Uh, I was telling Jerry that we had these uh, interviews with chairs. We, had, we brought in all kinds of chairs. We didn't want any chairs you could sit in for longer, for shorter than three hours. I mean, because you just really, we had a lot of three hour classes at night. And you know, when you sit and you've been in there all day, mm -hmm. so anyway, we, we interviewed all these chairs, and by said them, they wrote their reviews on them. This is before there was, you know, internet, and you can do rate my professor, rate your chair, dot com. So, anyway, we decided on that. So everybody had a real stake in it. Uh, from that experience, they nominated me as, a, as the administrative year for the Florida Association of Community Colleges, which I won and was very privileged to do. But that was a wonderful experience of give and take and taking the best ideas of everyone. That's just typical of the kind of thing I like to do which is get the best thinking from people. I mean, I have opinions about things, um, but I'm very open to other people's, I want to listen to what other people know and say, um, and that influences me. I don't just listen for listening sake and it goes right over. I really am interested in what people have to say, and I'll ask a lot of questions about things. So um, that's, that just gives you some sort of an idea about that kind of style. In 1997, I was the uh, interim president of the college. Florida Community College has five campuses. It's about 60,000 students. It's a big place. And um, we were having trouble getting our president's search together. Unlike this one, which is so well-oiled, it's just amazing. But we had an unsuccessful search. We made an offer to a candidate. The candidate actually was from North Carolina. And then, you know, uh, after some kind of misbehavings of our board, um, decided not to take the job. So uh, we had had an interim who was executive vice president for a year and I was campus president. And so I threw my hat in the ring to be the second interim president and have all of these people that I used to report to report to me. So uh, I did the campus president, the, the college president for a year. Uh, actually, it was a little less than a year. So I worked with the board there. And it was, a, it was a board that was required, and I was able to help bring that board together. Um, they unanimously elected me as the, as the interim president, and we completed that search very successfully. We got an excellent candidate to be our president, and um, kept all of those pieces and parts together. During that time, we had the first budget workshop the board had ever had. 
uh, because I needed to know more about it and they needed to know more about it. And the fiscal responsibility of these enterprises is huge and everybody needs to know. This is before Enron and all these other kinds of things where everybody now is really paying attention to finances, but you have to pay attention to finances. So we did a board workshop, which we've now, we've continued ever since then. It's, it's become a tradition. Um, we also um, had had a long-term sort of relationship with the Sheriff's Office, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Um, they wanted a new facility, but they were not able to get it. And we had friends in the legislature who were willing to do it. So I went to the sheriff and said, you know, I think this is the time for us to get the funding for this building. And uh, he sort of didn't believe it. I said, oh, I really am sincere about this. And he knew me from my community life, uh, which I'll tell you about in a little bit, I guess. Um, and so we were able to put our proposal together, go to the legislature, and we got a $25 million criminal justice uh, center funded in one year in one term. Um, it didn't hurt that the President of the Senate was in our district, um, but we were able to do that. It was a wonderful partnership that now you know, continues to, uh, to work very, very well. So during that period of time as an interim, um, I found, you know, I liked being able to make uh, partnerships and, and go to the legislature and get money um, and build things for our community and you know, sort of bring the bacon home. Um, and I really like that. I couldn't apply for the uh, presidency in 1997 because I didn't have my doctorate degree. I had kind of risen from the ranks, you know, um, and I was made uh, campus president because I had grown that whole enterprise of the continuing ed area and the off-campus credit and the telecourse area so large that I had the third largest campus already. I was a dean of campus, so they made me the provost at that time of the campus because we just grew it large. And um, so I didn't have to, you know, apply for a job or go to an interview or have a, you know, meet and greet or do any of that stuff. Um, and so that was a, that was a real, uh, real coup for me. I really, enjoyed, you know, it was wonderful being appointed to that position. Um, from that, the, the new president uh, gave me the additional responsibility of not just running the open campus, which continued to grow, but also running the downtown campus, which is very similar, I think, to, to the technical um, area of mission that you have. Uh, which had automotive and carpentry and welding and um, many, many programs like that, as well as English as a Second Language, the biggest adult program in the city, we have the biggest high school in the city. Um, and just about anything else you can think of that you can put on a campus, it has it all. Uh, college credit, you know, good student support center, um, and an urban environment. So I ran that one for three years. Um, and then we, we split that open. Uh, one of the things that uh, that happened is that I had hired. Uh, this is, I want to talk a little bit about <coughs> diversity. Um, I had hired a dean. It was the first black dean um, at, uh, at the downtown campus, and uh, uh, she had, had worked her way up, and I had mentored her, and so she became campus president then of downtown campus, and, and I went back to or continued to expand the open campus. Open Campus then, in those days, in the 90s, really uh, focused on uh, economic development and working with business and industry partnerships. And we took that American TransTech AT&T experience and did that many times. We had 200 businesses that we're working with and um, did all kinds of customized training curriculum things. We did uh, most of the training for the city of Jacksonville, you know, bringing people into to computer labs like their business and industry uh, uh, program. Um, so we had a lot of experience doing that. What we found uh, was that one of our biggest customers was the Navy, because they had three big places in Jacksonville. They closed Cecil Field, which was one of them, but we had three big ones. And um, that they were, they were the only people in town that had any money. So we decided we would see if we could do more for them. And after <coughs> uh, the war started, um, and after 9-11, the federal government was looking for areas for homeland security training. And we had had experience having two centers, actually three. We had three bases, we had a center on each one, when they closed one, and we closed that. Um, we had two centers, and they were college credit centers, and we were very good at doing military education, college credit courses on, on the bases. And so we put in a proposal to do uh, force protection using our criminal justice degree and teaching for them. So 
they gave us a huge contract, which has probably been worth about $4 million now, uh, in teaching Homeland Security and force protection. We spun that up to OSHA, which I think you do in your continuing ed, um, because a disaster is a disaster, whether it's done by terrorists or whether it's done by a hurricane or a tornado. So we took those same skills. Then we built it into a degree program um, for environmental science. So we, we take what we learn and then we ramp it up. And that, that, I think that's an example of the kinds of things I like to do is use some, you know, the curriculum's already there. The target group might be very different. The way you offer it online or a telecourse or whatever might be very different. Um, but you know you can use the same sorts of things over and over again. You know your advisory committees help you get get in um, and help you keep your curriculum up. And all the things that you've got, all the pieces and parts that you've got, um, work very well. But what we do in Open Campus is we take those things and we multi-purpose them. You know if it's if it's an environmental course, can it fit here, can it fit there, can it be for this, can it be for that? Um, and it's really, I think, paying dividends for us. Um, the military program continued to grow and we pursued and got two large contracts with the military. We now do all the training in Great Lakes, which is their boot camp. Um, and then we do the training now in Pensacola. And these are apprenticeship and career schools in engineering and in aviation personal finance and that kind of thing. That is worth $67 million to us and um, has really helped our enrollment, as you can imagine, and our FTE. Um, and it's it's been a triple win. We've taken some of the courses that they take in these um, apprenticeship and career courses. We use the uh, military process, which is the American College of Education, the ACE Guide. This is all Navy E's now for a while. Um, and they have degree programs. So we work with the military at the Pentagon level um, to design degrees for them that have a combination of training and education to get an uh, associate science degree that matches their rate in the military. So they get their degree while they're in the military. And we have been dedicated to this because um, you know these sailors are giving up huge amounts of their time. They have almost no shore leave. They're always deployed. Um, so we want them to not be at a disadvantage for serving their country. So we feel very, you know, very much uh, that that's a mission that we have. From that, we found that the, the National Guard needed uh, ways of continuing their education too. So we went uh, to our legislator and we got an air <coughs> mark. I know those things are I'm not, uh, anyway, we got an air mark. We got an earmark to develop uh, online courses, except not online. So you put them on a little PDA, a little computer, and you can take the course, and it's got the testing, and the mastery learning, and the lectures, and the book is all in these little uh, these little computers. And then, of course, you know, you've got the eye sticks. Are you familiar with those? Where you can put everything on a little stick. I'll show you what I got on my purse. Um, I could have a computer in my purse, and my purse is so big, but it's just <laughs> small. Um, and you carry your, your courses along with you. You can, when you get a chance to get on the internet, you can upload your your uh, your papers and your work and all that. And then, so we tried that in the field in Iraq, um, and it was it was a very successful kind of experience. We did six courses like that, um, and now the military is very interested in us developing more of that kind of thing. So there's a big market there for people who are helping um, sailors, soldiers, whoever, uh, get their degrees. This is translatable to any enterprise. Uh, we're looking at private businesses and our own students. You know, we're sort of uh, degree center, certificate center, like you are. I saw you know your list of things that you have. You've got certificates, you've got degrees, you've got diplomas. You know, finish, 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 finish. Um, you know, I built no dead end jobs and no dead end careers here. Um, so that's what we have built over time. The telecourses evolved to online. Uh, we had one of the first, <coughs> I think in 1995, there were 100 online courses. We had one of them. It was, an, it was, a, it was a CIS and a, a uh, computer course, and we sort of just played with it. And now we have 240 courses online, and we have 42,000 enrollments in that program. And our telecourses have declined over time because students prefer the, the uh, interactivity and the involvement with the faculty member. 
I mean, there's no question in my mind <clears throat> that the faculty made it happen. That is where the magic is. I don't care if it's automated. I don't care if it's on a PDA. I don't care if it's on a telecourse. It is that interactivity and that teacher who mentors that student that makes it all happen. So, and I know this because when we were huge in telecourses, there were big differences in success rates among the faculty. It's not that course. It was the faculty-student interchange, interaction, all of that. So even though we've grown to a huge online experience, um, we're not lost touch with the, the faculty. Faculty are going to lose their jobs. No, this is the biggest employment area ever. The college at uh, FCCJ now has 22% of all of its FTE online. And that was not a purposeful thing. In fact, our finance vice president said, you know, do you know that this is big? This big? I said, yeah, it's doubling every year. Yeah, I know it's this big. Um, and do we want it to be? How much bigger do we want it to be? What do we want to be when we grow up? You know, how much bigger is this going to be? Well, for us, we're going to take those sailors now, and there are thousands of them, and they'll be able to finish their AA or AS degree online because we've got this very big program. And so even if it doesn't grow locally, it will grow nationally. That is a market that anybody can have in any county in any state if they do degree programs and if they can speak the language. Um, and put degree programs together and communicate that out there. Now you got to have online registration, online application, online, you know, the, that whole thing, which I understand you're on the, on the, uh, just close to having. Um, but that's, that's the next breakthrough, is to build the infrastructure and they will come. They have to know it's there, but they will come. So those are the, the two big enterprises right now that I'm handling are those. I've kept the Women's Center, which has, been an amazing program of, re, of this job retraining. And I think uh, you are perfectly positioned for this job retraining for the industries that are closing. And that you are on the, right across the street from the biggest deal I have ever seen, the phoenix in the clay. I mean, it is amazing uh, to see that, what, what is trying to happen over there. And to see the commitment of the community for it, I think it's already, what, they already got $168 million commitment from the community and then you don't see that everywhere. I mean, that is exciting. Um, and it's big. And one of the capabilities I have is that I've never done anything old. Uh, mostly everything we do, we've never done before. And I really like that because, you know, if somebody's already done it, they tell you you've done it wrong or you could have done it this way or why don't you do it my way. But if they've never done it either, it's marvelous. <laughs> um, so, you, you know, you just, it's really, I mean, I do OJT all the time. And, you know, you take what you know and then you build it together and you, you try and create something. So that has been, um, uh, you know, a real, real love of mine. I say the reason I've been at FCCJ as long as I have at a campus president as long as I have is because I've never had the same year twice. Never. And this year is no exception. So um, I can see the possibilities there. Um, and because you are the local community college, you know, and you need to be in the centerpiece of that. Because in America, the community colleges are where it's at. I mean, I think the politicians are finally figuring that out. In fact, um, Senator McCain making the rounds came to Jacksonville and his people called up and said, I want to see that computer course you've got, I mean that those courses you've got on the little computers we heard about. We want to bring Senator McCain and we want to see this. So this is during spring break, so forget spring break. <laughs> and so we orchestrated, you know, 45 minutes of intensive, you know, show and tell to somebody who's gonna just do a sort of almost a drive-by. Um, but he came in and he had the governor with him, his wife and his mother, and they came in and they played with these things. The problem was nobody would wear their glasses because it was a photo opportunity. <laughs> these things are <laughs> <laughs> You know, I have no idea if they got it at all. <laughs> you know, these are things that you, when you're in your ship on the, you know, in the rack, you know what those things are? They're like stacks. Okay, so here you are, and you can do this stuff, and you've got great eyesight because you're in the military. And all. That's for them. These guys, they, somebody <laughs> go and dig in somebody's purse, bring out those dive store glasses, and pass them around. <laughs> so that was that. 
Um, you can see no pictures with glasses on which you can see. Um, and right across the hall was our force protection course with uh, 25 new enlisted sailors learning how to shoot guns in the hallway. Um, I'm getting pretty, you know, I'm pretty comfortable with that stuff. And so he went over and talked to them for a while, and that was another photo opportunity. It was just a marvelous time. Um, we were supposed to go upstairs and see another new program that we have in the Department of Defense, which is a call answering area for uh, spouses. They have now opened up tuition assistance <coughs> their money uh, for um, tuition assistance for, for, for wives. Now, I was in the Navy way for 23 years. Believe me, I didn't have any of that. But they have really seen the light. They both. Both family members end up having to work anyway, and they need transferable skills. They need to have uh, occupations that can move as these people move. Um, and so we were thrilled to be invited to be one of eight uh, colleges that are doing that, and the one, the first and only call center, which they're going to ex expand. Um, so our Navy connections, I had the Department of Defense, Office of Secretary of Office, Office of the Secretary of Defense, people in my office uh, two days out of seven last last week looking at ways that they can give community colleges work. There's plenty to be done. Uh, that's a huge area. They need it. Everybody that, that works in the Navy is now being um, deployed and having to fight, so they have a huge need, and that's been a real important mission. And it's pushed our college. It's pushed all the infrastructure. It's pushed uh, online registration. It's pushed automation in all kinds of ways. Things we were going to do anyway. We got the money, and we had the re and the reason to push those things ahead. So that's really been a, a nice synergy of, of working with that industry that has money and needs and urgency. And our college, who is very receptive, anything for the sailors, kind of you know. Um, and so that's really <coughs> things work, and it's and it's just helped. I think the college as a whole. We teach them culinary arts. We teach them barbering. And uh, you know we'll get other contracts like that too. Um, but it's not just the Navy; it's in multiple places. Uh, but that keeps one of the things I like about open campus is I have every every type of discipline, every kind of online thing, um, every kind of course, and uh, huge challenges in it. Uh, and and uh, the biggest the biggest difficulty is having the the organization itself <coughs> handle this kind of growth and. Uh, this kind of push, you know, kind of speed. They want something and they want it now. So uh, it's, that's been the challenge of trying to get the organization to react uh, and to plan ahead and to do it. So that, those are the, the, the big pieces. On a community level, I've been very active in community leadership. Uh, we have a leadership Jacksonville program. I was in in 82. And I ultimately ended up doing some national work on ethical leadership, my dissertations in ethical leadership. And I'd be glad to answer questions about that or any of the other stuff that I've done. I brought some resumes with me if you want to look at those. But I'd rather hear your questions now, and then um, we'll, we'll interchange, yes? What kind of interface have you done with the university system? I'll tell you, let's see. We're mad at them right now. <laughs> they have captive enrollment. They sent us an email yesterday saying that our, our graduates for this, our graduation Saturday, um, and usually you graduate, you get your transcript, and then you apply, and that's been how it's been. They said, we're already full. We aren't going to take your graduates. So we're going to go for us. We're going to go crazy. So if you forget about yesterday, we had a really good relationship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? He's, he's at the University of Florida North. University of North Florida? Okay. Yeah. North. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, here. Here are our itinerary today. <laughs> Prior to that, you know, when UNF, University of North Florida was built in 72, was the first upper level public education in that area. FCCJ was the first <coughs> public education, period. When you think about that, that's just amazing to me. When you think about how old, you've got some really old institutions here, this is new. Um, and we had a two plus two arrangement formally, and then the University of North Florida went to four year, that was sort of difficult. Um, and then we do, their, we do their developmental education for them now. Uh, we have a very good transfer policy until yesterday, <laughs> um, and uh, so we, do, we work very well. We have articulation agreements with them. Uh, our nursing programs are sort of, you know, not uh, not totally coordinated. They have a four-year degree. We have a two-year two degree, which is 72 hours, but um, our 
So there's a little bit of competition, but there's a little, there's a lot of compl uh, complementary relationships there. Their uh, president is the former mayor. And, you know, he's friends with everybody. We're friends with him. We know each other, and we, we work well together until this this big crunch. And the big crunch came out of the legislature who said that you know we weren't going to fund. We're going to give you your money back. You know, so like, go join with your neighbor, and you can build your own road. Um, so you might have heard the inside talk that was at the university level. So they they were courting more students, and they were thinking you guys got too many. Yeah, that's right. So that's right. Well, <laughs> now they have too many. In fact, to get to, to go to the University of Florida now, state school, you have to have a 4.0 or better, and huge SAT scores. So the community colleges are going to be almost, a, you know, they used to be the safety school. They're not safety school anymore. I mean, it, it is really amazing. Uh, Florida is going to be in a jam um, because of, of uh, its higher education and, and what's going on now at the at the uh, statewide level. But prior to scarcity, we worked really well. Right? And we, the, in my shop, we have more. We work with more than UNF. Uh, we have articulation agreements with many colleges that take our degrees, and you can finish them online. We also have arrangements with other schools where you can do a three plus one. Take three years with us and then one year with them to finish. And those are out of state schools. Um, and then we have regular articulation. The University of West Florida had an online degree program. UNF doesn't do anything online or anything teleports or anything distance. They won't go off their campus. Um, we think that's odd. And uh, we go off campus all the time. We're doing classes in people's businesses all the time. And uh, whatever customer, you know, whatever the city needs, we're there for. Um, and so that's that's pretty much how we, we handle it. But we have articulation agreements with at least 11 schools. We're always looking for other schools to to articulate. We want our graduates to be able to finish or to go on to whatever they want. And so our plan is to give them what they need to go to go on and to make make those inroads to build those relationships so that they don't have to worry about it. That's what we do. Okay. <laughs> I hope this is not speaking out of school or putting you on the spot, but I'm, I'm listening. We have ourselves in this area some friendly competition relationships with other community colleges which are more urban oriented, but far better funded in many ways than we are and can do a lot more things. So I'm listening to you describe what you have in Jacksonville and it's Nirvana compared to even the places that we're envious of. So I, I'm curious what would attract you to come to such a so much smaller a place. I understand that the possibilities of the of the research campus are enormous, but but that's a ways coming, and I'm I'm just interested in what would be the attraction to you of coming to a place like this. What do you think you could accomplish here? And also, it's a two-part question because we, we're coming off a presidency of, of an unusually long duration, and I think there's going to be, as there would be in any circumstance, a, a transition period. How, what kind of commitment are you thinking of down the road? You're, you're, sounds like you're coming to a retirement place. Are you? Would this be a commitment that you would make to us of some time? Okay, that's fair enough. Um, I mean, I could retire, but I'm not. I'm not looking for it. I'm not even. I don't even want it. Um, and my husband, who's older than I am, um, <coughs> he don't want to do either. So, you know, it's like we've learned all this stuff, we know all this stuff, what are we going to do for an encore, you know? And uh, in retirement, he, I, have to, I have to make an appointment with him, you know, he's just busy doing all this kind of stuff. So, uh, it was a huge decision to make, to, to decide to apply for this job. Uh, primarily because I've got my roots, you know, in, in Jacksonville. But I think I'm, my president is fantastic. The board loves him, and he's not going anywhere. And I can't finish it. I can't uh, make my mark uh, there any more than I have. In fact, I've had to go national to even be able to use the, the kinds of talents that I have. And that's what I've done. I've leveraged areas that, that he's not in because he's in everything. Um, and so, I think I'm looking for a place where I can be a leader, where I can have more of an impact on all of it. You know, the environment, the uh, the 
courses, the, um, the careers, the, the, uh, the whole community. Um, and I've had a substantial impact in Jacksonville. As, that's not my issue. I think a bill will be hard to leave. Um, so that's one thing. Um, the, so that what attracts me here is, I think, the mix of the programs, um, the fact that I think I can make a difference. I can, I can use what I already know, and then you've got this whole unexplored area that nobody knows, which totally attracts me. Um, I think those are the things that do it. Uh, I only applied for, you know, this is the only one I'm looking at. Uh, so, and, and my, my mother was born in Rock Hill. Um, we drove down, we saw Legan, is it Legan, Legan, Legan Engineering or something? That's her great-grandmother name. So this area is an area, you know, that, that attracts us. I'm from Kentucky originally. And uh, so, you know, I think there's a lot of appeal here. If I were going to retire, I don't, it probably wouldn't be here. Um, I don't know where it would be. I mean, I'm not a beach person, so that's not even it. I mean, there's just, there's so much to do. Uh, you know, I've been in Jacksonville or in FCCJ my, my whole career in community colleges, but I went away to Columbia University to that degree program so I could expand my horizon. And that certainly did. Columbia will do that for you. It's an excellent program, and people from all over the country um, gave you a fabulous faculty. Oh my gosh, fabulous faculty. Uh, so I, I made a decision to do that instead of going to UNF and getting their one doctoral program, or going to University of Florida. Um, and I didn't have to quit my job to, to get in that program, so I went to, to that. And then I got on the, I got elected to the AACC board, American Association of Community Colleges board, where I could see communities <coughs> nationwide, and I think New York, North Carolina is where it's at. I mean, your system is strong and getting stronger. Uh, community colleges are the lifeblood of this nation. They are the next hope of this, of turning this place around. Not just your two county area, which I think has been the poster child for uh, losing your job and needing new skills, this is it. I mean, just to, to see, you know, the mills bulldoze, right? I and mean, it is just, it's classic. It's happening everywhere. Uh, this retraining, it's much smaller. It's, it's uh, less impactful. We have it in Jacksonville, too. But Jacksonville's been a net, you know, new people coming all the time. I mean, there's just a lot going on there. It's very, very attractive. It has been. Um, but I think I, I really am interested in making my mark. It takes a while to do that. You have to stay because you can't. It takes a long time from a plan to reality. Um, some things are fast, but some things take a long time. So you want to see it too. <coughs> one of the, the, the issues I had is I've been, you know, 20 years in a tanks. And I have seen change every year. And, and it'll never settle down. I know that. So there's really no time to, to leave it. Um, I think it's, if I'm going to leave, I, I need to uh, uh, make the decision sooner than later, you know, nobody's getting any younger, and I still have the energy, the time, and uh, the commitment to give, and uh, I mean, I have a huge amount to offer to the right place, you know, and uh, I think this might be the right place, you know, from what I've seen, it's just really exciting, very exciting.